Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker and we are in perhaps Tucker's favorite press vehicle that we've ever had. Tucker, who is this? Lightning. Lightning McQueen in the 2023 Kia EV6 GT. This thing is ridiculously quick and befits that Lightning name. And in this video, we're gonna tell you what it's like for our family of three. Stay tuned. This video is brought to you by Electron EV Chargers. More about them at the end of the video and down in the description below. Charging started. All right, Holly, so uh, we have been in essentially this vehicle before because we had the GT Line last summer. We road tripped that up to our favorite spot in Beaver's Bend found that the range is getting there, but this is the go fast version. This one is Lightning McQueen, especially in this red paint job. But uh, what have been your impressions with this one? Because I know as soon as I told you it was coming, you said this was the one you were driving this week. <laughs> yeah, and I stand by that. It's still <laughs> fun to drive. It's a lot of fun to drive. So. We are no strangers to EVs here. Uh, we are sponsored by Electron Chargers, so uh, be sure to stick around to the end of the video to learn more about that. We don't shy away from them. We like them a lot. There are a lot of pluses. What do you say the benefits are in this particular one, this GT? Um, well, it does go fast. Very fast. <laughs> I. I won't say that I've stretched her legs as much as you have. Oh my gosh! But for me, I've stretched her legs. Yep, yep. You know, I'm not a go faster right. person. But um, for you, it comes in handy merging into traffic, things like that. So while well, yes, it, it's got that ridiculous giggle factor of just outright speed, mm -hmm. it, there are some legitimate use cases for it. Okay. Sure, and if you are familiar with driving in Tyler, Texas at all, you know if you get stopped at one red light, you're getting stopped at all the red lights. So this car was very beneficial in scooching up, mm -hmm. going a little bit quicker to get ahead of that <laughs> and get all the green lights instead of all the red lights. Yep, yep. <laughs> So we will direct you back to our family road trip in the EV6 GT line for a lot of the livability features of it. This one, really, the big difference is wheels and tires, the seats, the, seats. the green accents, the brakes, and the all-out performance of it. This, this thing is, I'll say it, stupid quick. Like, stupid quick. And just give us a small little taste. Why yeah, don't you? stupid quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, you want me to yeah, interview? Yeah. And that's an eco mode. Woo. What do you think, Tucker? Gray. Gray. Is that fast? No, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker will call you out. Uh, he has been with me when I've pushed that neon green GT button. And speaking from experience, I, I like to go fast. I love going fast. This car almost makes you car sick. And if you're not careful, just the, the blistering quickness of it, it's a bit much. <laughs> Too much? <laughs> Let's go. Ah! It, it makes me wonder why we need more of these on the road. <laughs> With, I know I can handle it. Oh my gosh. But there, there are some people, I'm more concerned about everyone else. <laughs> driving crazy yes, yes. Hmm. Uh, with all this power on tap but um, yeah this is a, a ridiculously quick but fun vehicle but we road tripped that last one we really didn't do an at-home test of it what are your thoughts driving this one this? here at home in our normal stomping grounds well I've really enjoyed it um, yeah driving fast it's nice um, the ride on it. We just the went over railroad tracks. Yeah, it's, it's really solid. smooth. 
Um, I think probably my favorite thing about this car, though, even beyond that, you know, we're, we do like EVs and we like the way they drive. I like just being able to go and not having to wait for the transmission to kick mm -hmm. in and stuff like that. Um, but the best thing about this car, in my opinion, is the way it looks. It's, yeah. it's style, it's yeah. decoration, yeah. Um, you mentioned the seats, mm -hmm. which they are bolstered on mm -hmm. the sides. And to be honest, this is where we might differ. <laughs> I like the bolstering, but I feel like it's almost too tight and you can't adjust it. No, no, uh, these are racing seats. This is the go fast version. So uh, you really liked the seats in the GT mm -hmm. line. I did. Um, these may just be a little over the top for daily driving, but they definitely give you and that feeling not, of yeah it's not like it's not comfortable right. it's just like it's a little too much <laughs> <laughs> like i'm not gonna be driving all crazy like that <laughs> but um speak you know, for yourself or i just <laughs> wish that you could adjust it right which takes me to my next thing there's not a lot of automatic adjusting going on in this mm -mm. Mm -mm. um you know the seats are all manual like Complete. crank it up and crank it down yeah <laughs> Uh, interestingly, a lot of stuff are manual, not power in here. Mm -hmm. Most notably, yes, the seats. Mm -hmm. um, especially, and we'll get to it later, this price point just has me scratching my head on that one. I realize it's an EV. I realize they put the money on the performance side of things. But even still, I don't, mm, it's... It's sus. <laughs> it's sus. <laughs> um, but the head-up display is nice, mm -hmm. and it has that little warning when someone's in your blind spot, I like which I lot. like and doesn't always come with mm -hmm. all the head-up displays. So I really like that. And you can't beat the size, uh, right? The, there's a lot of space. Tons of space, especially. And a you lot right of now. storage in this vehicle. So, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The wheelbase on this is longer than their three-row Telluride SUV. Mm -hmm. And this is a two-row vehicle. So that means tons of space inside. Mm -hmm. And even sitting behind myself, I've got tons of space. Sitting behind you, even more space. I'm just looking, like, that's limo amounts of room back there. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there would be a lot of leg space back there for mm -hmm. a tall person, for sure. But it did make me do a double take because it does feel long enough to be three rows, yep. but it's yep. not. Uh, they definitely could have packaged it a little bit different. Coming up very soon, in fact, uh, this month, Kia will unveil their three row SUV based on this platform. So we'll see mm -hmm. what they have up their sleeves. We did see their prototype or their concept vehicle in LA a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, yeah, all around very Other features that are my favorite is this little camera thing. Yeah, what is the, it called? The blind spot camera. The blind spot camera. I love those. And then the little storage underneath the, mm -hmm. the center console, console here. Which has it's, clips for maybe some handles on bags. Yeah, it's perfect little storage for purse, makeup. Mm -hmm diaper bag, whatever. I hate to cut you off here, but we are on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas. Time for Tucker's wobbly head test. Tucker, what do you think? Great. Great? So, uh, this being an EV, the entire... No, it's for <laughs> the entire floor of this is the battery pack. So, this is a very heavy vehicle. It's rated as an SUV, both on weight and some of the... <laughs> Oh goodness, some of the dimensions on it. Uh, I, I would say it's a tall car, but very heavy, rides very solidly, and hides uh, some of the indiscretions in the road with its uh, big size, heavy weight, and long wheelbase. All that helps to give it a very comfortable ride. And we've definitely been on worse, right? <laughs> definitely been on worse. But I guess I was happy to have these bolsters for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not going anywhere in these seats, that's for sure. <laughs> no. All right, putting a child seat in the back of the Kia EV6 GT, pretty simple. A lot like what people are used to with a modern SUV, even though I still don't call this an SUV. Fish the top tether through the headrest right there. Lower latches are very easy to find. They're not covered up 
with seat material. And there's a little button here to let you know exactly where they are in the seat. So once you get everything untwisted, you can line that up, clip it into place very easily and nicely. Very easy to get in here, plenty of room to tighten it down. And then with it being a hatchback, getting that top tether tied down very tight, very easy to do. It does squish the seat back just a little bit, but I give this an A plus for ease of installation. So speaking of the bolsters and the, the neon, what, what are your thoughts? I like it. <laughs> I think it's enough um, neon to give it a little bit of character, mm -hmm. but not so much that it's like, oh, that's neon. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit in here. The brake calipers are also neon green, which you can see very nicely behind the 21 inch wheels uh, and those performance tires. Again, SUV performance tires. Very interesting in this. But, uh, and you can adjust the, the interior lighting to whatever color you want. Uh, it was delivered to us with green. I, I notice it matches more closely to my pants now <laughs> than, uh, yes. You, you wonder you who adjust? could have done that. Mm, can't imagine, can't imagine. Mama likes her ambient lighting, right? Yes, and then yes she does. We have a Qi wireless charger right here, which works even on your phone case, which does not have uh, the MagSafe built into it. So very strong charger there. The interesting thing though, we've got two uh, large screens up here, no wireless Apple CarPlay, mm. which just eh. Another, another head scratcher. Eh. Yeah, uh, which Kia doesn't really put on any of their premium vehicles. It's all wired. This one is wired through a USB-A plug, not even a USB-C, so that's interesting there. And then we've got to talk about it. My perhaps least favorite thing that Kia has done lately, it's not just in this, they're putting it in the Sportage as well. Mm. The toggle between the radio controls and the climate controls here on this screen. So we've got two knobs that can either be our uh, dual uh, dual mode <laughs> uh, HVAC. There we go. <laughs> I can't talk this morning. Uh, but Temperature controls. Uh, you can also hit this button here and it goes to your radio controls where my temperature control is now the tuning knob and yours is the volume knob. And I've also noticed from living with this that if you put it on the HVAC controls, it only stays there for about 10 seconds of mm. non-use and then it goes back to your radio controls. So you have to decide what you want quick. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're reaching up to uh, change your temperature, you're going to blast yourself out or mm. completely mute your volume if you're not used Well, to it. and I also like changed the volume and accidentally clicked the mm. climate controls yeah. with my other finger. Seems unnecessary times. to me, especially when the other vehicles on the platform. Unnecessarily complicated. Yeah, the, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 doesn't have that. The Genesis GV60 doesn't have that. So I, I just don't understand why Kia had to make it unnecessarily complicated. Yeah. Mm. So I and will. Maybe an unpopular opinion yeah. for the touch screen. Yeah. Look at all those fingerprints. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it's like the main thing right here in your. That's all we can see I right now, too. That's all we can see your fingerprints. Which I'll bring up. We know. are at 95% battery, estimated 208 miles of range. You are in eco mode. You don't have one pedal driving on, all those things. Uh, we over almost 200 miles are averaging 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. All that for you numbers nerds out there. Just curious. You do pay a penalty getting this over the GT line. You pay a penalty on the GT line over the wind version uh, for overall range. So the more you lean into the performance, the less range you get. So uh, we probably could not take this one to Beaver's Bend and back on the oh, same really? trip that we took. Uh, I, I just remember on our way back to the DC fast charger, um, kind of sweating it out. Being a little, a little worried, and, yes. <laughs> uh, this has less range than that by a considerable amount. I believe that was in the 270s. This one, the largest number I've seen is 220. So 50 mile decrease in range. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and you might mention for those that didn't see the video before, one of the reasons that we were sweating it is there was one charging station halfway. In, between, <laughs> halfway in between here and our final destination. Yeah, and on the way up there, we charged and topped off, but we were only down to like 70%. So if you know anything about fast chargers, it gets you up to 80% very quickly and then trickle charges. So we had to make the half of the trip and half of the trip back. So the full trip, essentially, on 80% charge. And um, so there, there is that. Uh, but infrastructure is getting better. Uh, that'll only that's improve. That's what they say. That'll only improve over time. So that's, um, what they say. that's just <laughs> something to look forward to. But uh, I'm actually going to pull up uh, some of the specs on the GT line because we're going to start talking uh, numbers here and just a little bit price tag stuff like that and I just want to have those things handy in front of me yeah. look at you cutting in zigging and zagging That's in traffic right. so while we're talking range I will bring up the window sticker EPA estimated 206 miles of range which we're currently looking at at 95 percent charge so Again, it all depends on your driving behavior, your driving style, what one pedal mode you're activating, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. uh, MPGE, if that means anything at all to you, 85 cities, 74 highway, 79 combined, that number really doesn't mean a lot to me. The real interesting thing here is we're averaging 2.7 kilowatts per hour. And that includes uh, me being behind the wheel just a little bit. <clears throat> so there. Um, now we get to the part where I ask you what you think this thing costs. Now, I have a little bit of an advantage because I heard you talking to one of your friends. Uh -huh. She asked you what the cost was. I will remind you, this platform in the base trim, the wind trim with rear wheel drive starts at 44,900. Okay. The GT line we tested last summer was 58,105. Oh. The GV60 Genesis luxury vehicle that we tested was 63,000 and some change. Where do you feel this EV6 GT fits in the price range? The Genesis was the green one? Yes. And it was how much? <laughs> 63 and some change. And it was a luxurious vehicle. Didn't have quite the amount of power as I this feel one, like but you're it was very leading close. me. I'm helping. You're leading <laughs> I'm me. I'm helping. Because I definitely think that the Genesis had more features. It definitely did. Um, but by the way you're questioning me, I feel like this one must be more expensive than that one. Although I would assume, so why don't I just say what I told my friend was 47 is what I thought this car would be. Uh, but the, you yeah. Yeah, this is are obviously leading me to this so is, I'm going to I'm going to change. Yeah, this is obviously more than the $58,000 GT line. So yeah. you say 65? I guess. Window sticker on this one 62865. Mm. So comes in just a little bit less than that Genesis yeah. that we had which had power memory seats. Yeah had massaging seats, yeah. ventilated seats, had less power, but it did have the boost button, was still plenty quick in the grand scheme of things. And I do believe it had better range than this one did. So making a lot of sacrifices for all out performance when you get this Kia EV6 the, GT You mean model. the Sport is the performance model? The uh, EV GV60, we had the performance all-wheel drive model, yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're making a lot of sacrifices for the performance of this vehicle, for sure. Yeah. Too much? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, if I'm paying that much for a car, I better have automatic yeah. up-down seats. Yeah, so... No, Especially with you and me driving, yeah. I have to crank, like, forever. And, and the even more crazy thing is you and I recently had a Silverado... Uh, trail boss with the Dur Duramax diesel under the hood, same price tag as this. Surprisingly efficient on the highway and um, same price tag as this, essentially. So bigger, more capable vehicle in the long run and uh, 
you're, you're paying a premium for the performance of this for sure. So there you have it. Uh, maybe, maybe this one is a fun to have, but uh, not a fun to buy. Mm. Maybe too much. Maybe too much to buy. And I, I would even echo that just because I feel like the performance of the GT line was plenty. The EV GV60 was really my sweet spot. And the looks on that just even far exceed the looks on this, I think. Hmm. So style is yeah. subjective. I mean, the style is very nice. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it just depends. You'd have to compare. Yep. Is this the first time that we've agreed that I, uh, we're not buying a car? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Mark that down. And on that, that bombshell, if you want to see more from Holly, some behind the scenes from her, from Tucker, from me, uh, go find her on, on Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find uh, everything on the main channel and what we do at GT Garage Talk, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, all the things at GT Garage Talk or you can just head on over to gtgaragetalk.com, see what we're driving next, read more about these vehicles because we do put more detail uh, on our blog posts. But uh, yeah, on, on the bombshell of the fact that we agree that this is probably too much. <laughs> Until next time, gearheads. Bye. Electron supplied us with this 48 amp in-home charger. This V-Box can be installed indoors or outdoors hardwired or plugged in to a NEMA 1450 plug and even comes with a J hook and an adapter to uh, store your J1772 plug when it's not currently in use. This thing has been an absolute dream for charging uh, many of our press vehicles here on the channel and we've absolutely loved it. You can help us out and help them out while helping yourself out by checking the link down in the description below and getting one for yourself. Why is your window or your door wet? There's water on it. Did you drip your drink? No. It might be from the condensation of the air conditioner. Mm. No. Did you do something to make it wet? What did you do? Put a lemonade on it. Don't do that. Why did you do that? To trick me. To trick me? Okay. Yeah. My dear's a crappy. Dave. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell this game with that. We can get this car up our heel backwards, okay? Okay. That's what you tell the cameras. Tell the cameras that we can get it up our heel backwards? Yes. Well, we can get this up our very steep driveway backwards.